Hey guys, so what we're going to look at today is diffusion and osmosis. So we're going to be doing a lab experiment looking at osmosis and transport through the membrane of a cell. Uh, so we need to go over some of the key concepts of what is diffusion, what is osmosis. There are plenty of videos out there that show you these things. These, this is going to be the typical presentation that I would give in class uh, for this uh, to introduce the topic. So we're going to come in here and start talking about uh, first... Um, the cell transport across the membrane, we talk about the membrane of a cell. Right? So if this is my cell, right, I'll draw a nucleus in there as well. Right? Basically, we're talking about how things move in and out of the cell. Right? The membrane, the skin of the cell, the thing that separates the intracellular environment inside of the cell from the extracellular environment, the outside of the cell, is our cell membrane or our plasma membrane. When we looked at the cell, uh, we built the plasma membrane. We said it was the phospholipid bilayer. So we can draw our little bilayer of phospholipids here. I'm not going to go too far into this. Right? But every time we see a cell membrane like this, we need to think of a double layer, a bilayer of those phospholipid molecules. Now, there are two basic ways that we can move things in and out of our selectively permeable membrane, right? And it's through either active or passive transport. Passive transport, things are just going to move across the cell membrane without any energy input from the cell itself. Um, this can happen through one of two ways, just simple diffusion as the, um, that was interesting, uh, just simple diffusion as things move directly through the cell membrane, or right, if I draw my double, my plasma membrane here, right, this is outside, this is inside, in, things can just pass directly through that membrane. Right, that's basically considered simple diffusion. Another type of diffusion that we can have is called facilitated diffusion, where we have this protein uh, that's buried within the membrane, and in the middle of that protein is a little channel. Right? And this is still going to allow certain things. It's basically a doorway, uh, but allows uh, larger molecules or polar molecules to actually pass through the membrane uh, without actually having to make it in between these little phospholipid molecules. Right, So uh, we use the protein channel as a doorway in order to allow things through. Uh, in both these cases, in uh, simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion, there is no energy requirement from, from the cell. Things are just moving into the cell um, easily. The other way that we can do it is active transport. Active transport requires energy, right? So active is the key term there, right? Requires energy in order for that to happen. Um, and so moving things into the cell or out of the cell, an example of that is our sodium potassium pump. So sodium potassium, so sodium, 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 right? So we have three sodium molecules that are going to get pushed down into our cell, and we're going to have two potassium molecules, or ions, I should say, that's a better term for that, draw our little charges on here, uh, get pushed out. Um, and because we're moving against concentration gradients, we're going to talk about concentration gradients in a minute here, uh, but we're moving against concentration gradients um, to move these ions in and out of the cell. Um, easiest way that I can sort of talk about the difference between active and passive transport uh, is if you think of uh, the basement in your house, especially if you have a wet basement in your house, uh, that is essentially showing you both active and passive transport. So your basement is essentially a big hole in the ground and water moves from its areas of higher concentration outside of the foundation into this big open space, right? It starts to fill up your basement. Um, so what do we do? We put a little sump in here, we put a hole where the water's all going to sort of travel down into, and at the bottom you put a pump. Well, what does that pump do? It takes and pumps the water up and back out of your basement. Um, passive transport is the water moving into the big open space, right? Active transport is the pump moving it back uphill and back out against water. So you can kind of think of uh, things moving downhill versus uphill. You know, if you had a stone or a bowling ball at the top of the hill, you let it roll down, that's passive transport. It didn't require energy uh, to allow that to happen. Okay? What requires energy then is you actually taking that ball from the bottom of the hill and walking it back up to the top of the hill, right? That would be active transport. It requires energy to move that back uphill. Um, so quick definitions of active and passive transport or examples of active and passive transport. 
So our first type of transport, is we're going to call it diffusion. Okay? Diffusion, uh, the definition of diffusion is the movement of solutes right, from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration in a solution. Right? What this... Interesting. Uh, in order for diffusion to happen, it requires a concentration gradient, a concentration or a density gradient. So the key word here is gradient. The key word here is going to be gradient. Uh, and a gradient is basically just a difference between two points. Right? So you can have temperature gradients, you can have pressure gradients, you can have concentration gradients. Right? So a uh, great example of a uh, temperature gradient would be uh, inside your house versus outside your house. In the middle of the summertime, it can be 100 degrees outside, uh, but you have the air conditioner going on the inside of your house, and it's a nice cool 70 degrees or 68 degrees, however cold you want to keep your house. Uh, the difference in temperature is a temperature gradient. Okay, So a gradient is just a difference between two places. Uh, with the fusion here, we're talking about concentration or density gradients. Uh, so let's show you an example of that, and then we can show you the movement uh, that occurs, right? The movement of solutes from an area of high concentration to lower concentration. So here's an example of uh, diffusion. If we look at our test tube on the left-hand side here, we actually have two different gradients set up. We can see the blue balls, and you can see the red balls, all right? So here they're calling them molecules, uh, but we have a high concentration of blue molecules at the bottom of our little test tube here. We have a very high concentration of red balls at the or molecules at the top of our test tube. So here, right, it's a high concentration of blue at the bottom, a low concentration of blue at the top. Right? We said diffusion is the net movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So what we're going to see as time progresses, which is what these next two test tubes are showing, is that the blue molecules are going to start to move themselves essentially towards the top of the tube to make an equal concentration of molecules uh, throughout our tube. Okay, so we're moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Uh, with the red molecules, come on, it's not going to let me choose, huh? We can do it with the red molecules here. We have a high concentration of red molecules and a low concentration of red molecules. Right, so high concentration of red at the top, low concentration of red at the bottom. Right, diffusion says it's the net movement of substances or solutes from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Essentially, they're spreading themselves out to create an evenly distributed um, solution here. Now, typical examples people will use uh, to show this, you could say, if I was in a room and you broke open or opened up a bottle of perfume in the corner of the room, uh, eventually all of those molecules would spread throughout the room and it didn't matter where you were sitting in the room, you would be able to smell that. Well, that's a good visual example of uh, how diffusion works. It's actually not diffusion. Diffusion actually happens across very, very small distances. Um, essentially, air currents in the room are creating the movement of those uh, molecules here uh, throughout, the, throughout that large space. Within cells, Right, or within uh, very small distances here, it's actually uh, the energy of motion that these molecules have, the random motion of the molecules uh, that distributes them throughout the uh, throughout our beaker here. So uh, just remember, diffusion happens over very small distances. That's going to be your uh, one of your big keys there. But it's essentially the net movement of molecules, right? Net movement of molecules or solutes. from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. The net movement of molecules or solutes from an area of high concentration to low concentration, that is our definition of diffusion.